This is your Alabama WX weather briefing video for this Sunday, September the 29th. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray and a lot to talk about on this Sunday. The month getting away from us, 29th. It seems like I say that a lot, but I get to do this video four times a month, so I probably do say it pretty often. Uh, but uh, looking at the tropics this morning because we're going to spend some time there, we have Isaac. Uh, passing out to the uh, northeast there, uh, north of the Azores. This is a hurricane that will weaken very rapidly today as it continues to move off toward the European continent. We've got Joyce here, uh, well to the northeast of the uh, Lesser Antilles. And we've got our next disturbance right here that will become Kirk. Um, we'll go through time here and um, you know show you the progression. There goes uh, Isaac to the north. Uh, Joyce sort of dissipates. Kirk becomes the dominant system in the Atlantic. It becomes a hurricane there by late Tuesday into Wednesday. See uh, another disturbance in the uh, Western Caribbean. Uh, that is an area of interest. It is not an invest yet, but it will be soon. Uh, probably today, the Hurricane Center tracking it. It's going to move into the southern Gulf of Mexico, as you'll see here as we go through time. But this system, uh, which is likely to be Kirk, uh, we'll be moving over the open waters. Let's track it on out through time. Uh, it becomes fairly strong, you know, probably 115, 120 mile per hour hurricane before it begins moving over cooler water. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just uh, passes sort of harmlessly, except for ships, of course, uh, passing well east of Bermuda. And it uh, looks like bringing a little bit of gusty winds to the Azores, but nothing uh, of any tremendous significance. Uh, and then by, you know, Thursday the 11th, that's a long way out, the system will rack up some ace uh, accumulated cyclone energy as it, uh, as it spends a couple of weeks uh, traversing the tropics. But, you know, uh, kind of taking you back there, uh, you see the disturbance coming out of the Western Caribbean, moving into the Gulf, uh, intensifying, uh, and we'll see how strong that is in just a second. But you see there's a landfall on the uh, Florida Gulf Coast uh, on Saturday, Saturday afternoon. We'll kind of have to check that and see how that goes. But I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to switch this over to um, a Gulf of Mexico view uh, because I want to, you know, focus on, on that system. Let's see, uh, you know, here it is coming out of the Western Caribbean early, uh, well, not really early, but Thursday afternoon. It is passing through the Yucatan Channel. Um, you know, barely a tropical storm at that point. Um, at that point, it's probably going to be Leslie. Uh, tropical storm Leslie moving into the southern Gulf of Mexico. This is Friday morning. Uh, you see that it does begin to intensify there. It's a 55 knot tropical storm, a 60 knot. So it's approaching hurricane intensity uh, by Friday night, probably achieving it during the overnight hours Friday night. Uh, 68 knots uh, by midnight Saturday, uh, 70 knots there um, by 3 a.m., and 72 knots uh, by the time we wake up on Saturday morning. But you see it is on final approach uh, into the central Gulf Coast. 75 knots, that's going to be a 90-95 uh, mile-per-hour hurricane uh, by that time. And you see it makes landfall somewhere there in the uh, vicinity of 30A, west, uh, near west of Panama City. Now, um, the GFS has been very reliable, very reliable with Helene, um, you know, very early indicator giving us good signals of, uh, you know, what we could expect. And so I put a lot of stock in what the model's saying here uh, as well. Um, now, is this a forecast? No, but there is a strong signal that there is going to be a hurricane um, somewhere between the southeastern Louisiana coast, Mississippi, Alabama, northwest Florida uh, in the uh, late Friday, Saturday, Sunday time frame. Uh, you know, you can kind of, you know, believe that's going to happen. Um, where it's specifically going to happen and where those, you know, most important impacts are going to be is, you know, going to be something we have to tell over time. This is just one scenario, uh, certainly a very real one. But interests all along the Gulf Coast, from southeastern Louisiana, through the Mississippi coast, the Alabama coast, and the northwest Florida coast, unfortunately all the way over to the Florida Big Bend, have to be paying close attention uh, to this system 
as we go through time. This is the upper pattern across North America. There's the remnants of Helene spinning over southern Kentucky uh, and northern Tennessee. They've been getting some beneficial rains in this area. Uh, not beneficial rains uh, from uh, Florida. Obviously, they had problems with flooding, but the uh, rains in Georgia, South Carolina, uh, western North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, into southwestern Virginia, just horrific. Uh, tornadoes were a problem all day Friday in places like West Virginia. I even got to see a, uh, what uh, was a tornado or at least uh, very close to it near Cornelia, Georgia, on Thursday, um, you know, as the hurricane was approaching. Here's our subtropical ridge. Um, you know, trying to get this out of here, but the system is sort of landlocked. Let's see what happens as we go through time. Helene just sort of loses its oomph. The uh, ridge over the uh, southwestern Atlantic sort of, um, you know, extends its reach into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Um, that trough uh, moves off the east coast, but we see our disturbance uh, moving through the northwestern Caribbean here by Wednesday and Thursday, passing near uh, Cancun. And uh, just finding a weakness somewhere in there. That weakness uh, turns out to be over the southeastern United States. And uh, this trough right here will be helping to induce this turn that will um, push what will likely be Leslie um, to the east or the northeast. You see it sort of stalls there near the Georgia coast, finally gets picked up and uh, absorbed by the trough. Now, as we get into the week two period, you see, boy, some beautiful weather uh, over much of the United States. That's going to give us some fine fall weather uh, here in Alabama. We'll see that when we get into, um, into voodoo territory in a minute. Uh, starting off on this Sunday morning, uh, skies are cloudy over the northern part of the state. They'll become partly sunny at times. Southern part of the state will be much warmer today. Uh, in fact, these are kind of high temperatures, and you can see the effects of the cloudiness uh, over areas long and north of I-20. South of there, um, you're going to have highs in the 80s. To the north, you're going to have highs in the 70s, much like yesterday. Um, and you'll also see um, a few uh, patches of, you know, light drizzle, maybe some light rain. Uh, but this thing sort of, uh, as we go through time uh, through the day, uh, sort of becomes showery. So I would expect what's going to happen, we'll see a little more sunshine. As that happens, uh, instability will increase. No thunderstorms or anything like that. But we, see, we will see a few showers popping up. And that might be a little more cellular uh, than what we saw yesterday. You can see uh, the rotation there around the circulation of Helene. It has gone by 9, 10 o'clock tonight. And uh, as we get into Monday, still a few showers of the Tennessee Valley, but I think we overall um, will be drier as we get into Monday. You see those uh, scattered showers today? Well, yeah, there they are again Monday, but maybe over just the northern third of the state. I hope I've covered that in the forecast. I really called it uh, decreasing clouds for Monday. A little bit warmer, um, you know, so that... that Looks like that's a possibility. These are highs for Monday. Uh, still in the 70s over the Tennessee Valley, but uh, folks in the I-20 quarter hit 81, 82. Uh, U.S. 80 quarter, you know, approaching 84. Montgomery uh, topping out around 86 degrees. Uh, 88 at Evergreen. Good gracious. Will summer uh, ever end? Uh, I'm beginning to wonder that myself. But as we get into Tuesday, looks like, uh, well, there's a few showers along a dry front. This is sort of a new development. Uh, the 18Z run was not really picking up on this. I'm saying mostly sunny and warm for Tuesday. Matter of fact, we might just hop over to the European here and kind of see what it sees. And it doesn't put any stock in that. So I kind of think uh, this is either a new trend we'll have to monitor or it's just uh, one single model run. Uh, Wednesday, though, ends up looking mostly dry. Uh, sunny skies, warm temperatures. I need to find some more. I need to find some different ways to describe those three days uh, on the forecast. Mostly sunny and warm three days in a row uh, is a little, uh, a little monotonous, but that is what the uh, general gist of the forecast is. Thursday, uh, the ridge is still holding on. This new run of the uh, GFS brings in the uh, rainfall a little earlier. I would have expected that rain 
to wait until Friday, but everything in this run is a little quicker. Um, we're going to have to watch that forecast. Here comes um, what will probably be Tropical Storm Leslie early Friday morning at 7 a.m. Could be uh, seeing the development of a predecessor rain event uh, by Friday. Uh, across central and south Alabama. Switching back over to the European, we still see that is more over south Alabama. We'll kind of look at that trend in the morning, um, you know, before we update the forecast at noon to see if everything is sort of shifting up a day. You see the rain and showers continuing into Friday. Uh, right now, my forecast just calls for increasing clouds with showers uh, beginning during the night, Friday night with the best chance for rain coming on Saturday. Let's we'll see how that goes. Uh, this system is weaker than the 18Z run, for sure. Um, and I don't know why that would really be. Uh, the water temperatures over the Gulf are extremely warm, as you've heard ad nauseum. Uh, the oceanic heat content is high. And while we don't have a really well-developed upper-level anti-cyclone over the Gulf of Mexico, conditions don't look uh, unfavorable either and so I fear that we might have a stronger tropical cyclone than what this deterministic run of the GFS is. We really need to get an invest um, and then begin to you know run uh, some more specific model uh, you know uh, prognostications of what we might be seeing here but you see there we are Saturday morning we've got uh, tropical storm or hurricane that's 978 millibars that would indicate a minimal hurricane in most circumstances on final approach and it's uh, crossing the coast Saturday afternoon this is substantially faster than the previous run it really just moves everything up by about one day um, but again you know, by Friday and Saturday, uh, preparations are probably going to be required along a good bit of the Gulf Coast from Louisiana to Florida. We'll be watching to uh, see where that happens. system moves up into southeast Alabama. Uh, mostly areas uh, along the south of I-59 are getting, um, getting the rainfall Saturday night. Again, more rainfall for Georgia uh, there for Sunday. And the system sort of stalls. Now, here comes another system um, out of the Gulf, but it really never develops. Um, it does look like, though, we're going to have a flurry, a flurry of activity. Getting into the week two period, um, it looks like beautiful weather across Alabama and the southeast. Um, just what we're, you know, sort of famous for in October. Um, and that, and nobody's complaining about that, that's for sure. These are um, temperatures off the national blend of models, um, and you can kind of get a picture of, uh, of where we might be going with this thing. Uh, still warm this week. You know, I'm going to find a new way to say sunny and warm uh, for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, overnight lows right around seasonal norms, maybe a little bit warm. A degree or two, uh, but things start to kind of go down uh, hill, and that's not bad. Um, you know, we'll take high temperatures in the 70s, overnight lows in the 50s. That's just about perfect. Well, we're going to be joined by um, YouTube meteorologist Mitch West on Monday night on the Weather Brains podcast. He was down chasing Helene. We'll learn all about his exploits. And of course, our friend Mark Suddeth from HurricaneTrack.com, he's going to join us and of course mark always has incredible stories from the road uh from these things uh, i got to spend uh, a couple of uh, of nights in tallahassee uh, with my friend dr lance king from pensacola we uh, started out on friday traveled along the coast uh, down to st mark's and then all the way over to Appalachicola. Um, and just uh, exploring that spectacularly beautiful part of the coast and, uh, you know, just kind of wishing this hurricane away. And fortunately, that part of the coast uh, didn't have as big a problem. St. Mark's did, um, and they're east to the east. Uh, Tallahassee sort of dodged a bullet. You know, they've never had a sustained wind over 47 miles an hour at Tallahassee still. 41 miles an hour was the highest sustained wind measured during Hurricane Helene. They did have a gust to 67, but literally just 25 miles away, it was a whole different story. It's amazing how these, um, how these terrible storms work. 
uh, and really fascinating to watch. But Weather Brings is the weekly netcast. It's all about weather. You get it wherever you get your podcast. You can also watch it live on uh, YouTube at our uh, YouTube channel, Weather Brings. Um, is where you find that. You can find us at weatherbrains.com or you can also watch us live on the Dot 2 channel right here on our home, ABC 3340. That's your weather video for this Sunday morning. I'll have, uh, I've got notes on the blog. Scott Brown's going to update the forecast for me at noon. He'll have a couple of tropical updates too, kind of keep you updated on what's going on with this thing. And of course, um, you know, we'll be giving you frequent updates throughout the week, much as we did during Hurricane Helene as we get into what will likely be Tropical Storm and Hurricane Leslie. Well, until I get to do this again next week, I'm meteorologist Bill Murray signing off and telling you, like I always do, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at.